Today, we're going to be looking at the more unknown functions of C-Frame. These are the functions you would usually see when you're scrolling through the Roblox documentation. And the Roblox documentation being itself, well, you usually leave that site with a lot of questions being unanswered. So let's get right into it. And so the first function we're going to be looking at is cframe.lookalong. Similar to cframe.lookat, and these two functions pretty much do the same thing, but there's one little difference about them. And by the way, if you don't know, cframe.lookat, it's a way how you can make a vector look at another vector or position. But basically, both of these functions take an origin, right? The origin position, origin vector, same thing, right? But in uh, cframe.lookalong, it takes a direction, which is like a look vector, uh, meaning the direction is where we want the origin to look in whatever direction. And at look at, we put in a look position which is a position where we want it to look at. Very similar, but uh, yeah, they basically make one vector look in another direction. So how do we use this? So right here, I have two parts, origin, and I have another one called look at. What I'm going to do is make this origin part look at the look at part. But in the case of look along, look along the direction. So we're going to first get our origin parts. So game.workspace.origin. And we also need to get our look at parts. Game.workspace.lookat. And then we can make our new C frame. So we can say origin.c frame will be good to C frame dot look along. And we put in our origin and also the direction of which we want our origin to look at. So I'm going to put in origin.position. And we can just put in maybe like a random vector three value, like maybe two, three, and one, I guess. Sorry guys, but I caught my own mistake there. We actually probably don't need this look at part because if you wanted to make a part look at something, then you would obviously use look at, but look along, it's it's completely different thing you'll just see in just a second. So running this, we will see the part looks in that direction. Now it's a little weird, we put in two three one and you would think that would be near the origin or something but mind you this is off the origin c frame right we have an origin and it's going off of that origin so it's looking three studs in the air two studs on the x-axis i'm pretty sure and one stud on the z making it look up basically like this using our given coordinates and so the next one we have is C frame dot from axis angle. And what this does is we make a C frame from this function. And that C frame is rotated in radians around a certain axis. So as you can see from the name, uh, it takes a axis to put in and also our rotation, our angle. So we are going to get the part that is already in our game, which is the origin so we're just going to reference that again which is uh, origin there and we're going to make a new axis I don't really know how to name this I'm just going to say C frame and this will be C frame dots from axis angle and we're going to put in our axis and also then once again our angle to rotate that whatever we want on that axis so if we put in vector 3 dot new and say 1 0 1 0 so this is the y axis it will apply that rotation in radians around the y-axis. If we wanted it on the x, then we're just going to put a 1 there. But let's stick with the y-axis for right now. And in here, uh, we need to put in a number in radians. And if you're not familiar with radians, you can put in degrees into math.rad to convert it to radians. So we can put in here 60 degrees, and that will be converted to radians to be used in this function. And then we're going to come down here and say part dot C frame will be equal to this new C frame. Oh, before I move on and show you guys this, we actually need to multiply it by itself um, or else it'll just go somewhere else. And so we're just going to multiply it onto our existing C frame. So here is our part right now. We're going to click run and you will see we rotated the part on the Y axis by 60 degrees. 
if you wanted to change the axis which it is rotating on you can do that here or rotate it uh, by a greater number then you can also do that here you could rotate it by 160 degrees or that would be converted to radians and uh, 160 degrees is about 2.8 in radians so that's almost a full circle around uh, so as you can see here it, it doesn't look like it's moved but it was here and it did something like this I'm pretty sure all right, the next function is the easiest out of all the ones I'll be going over, and that is C frame inverse. You can't see right now, but it's like C frame colon inverse, like this. So here, just to show you guys, uh, I have part dot C frame will be equal to part dot C frame, and we can say inverse. And inverse makes the uh, C frame that we put in the opposite of itself. Okay, so let's say we have a C frame. So we're going to say C frame dot new. And let's imagine we have a C frame of negative seven, like two or, and maybe like negative eight. All right, just random numbers. And we called inverse on this. This would make seven or negative seven, I meant seven, two, negative two, and negative eight, eight. So if it's a, a negative number, it would be turned into a positive. If it's a positive, it would be turned to a negative. And actually, believe it or not, this is an interesting way to subtract C frame. So let's say we had uh, one C frame. All right, so C frame, let me, let me make this real quick. So I have these two C frames and how we could actually subtract these two using inverse is we can say something like C frame one times C frame two and we're going to call inverse on C frame two. And then we're just going to throw this oh, print in a print statement and we can see what this gives us. And as we can see here, it actually subtracted it. So uh, here, the first number is 11, 16 minus five is 11, four minus one is three. And we can see uh, seven minus three is four. And then all the other orientation, basic C frame stuff. And so the next function is C frame ortho normalize. I'm pretty sure I'm saying this right, but uh, don't get mad at me if I mispronounce it uh, the, through the entire explanation. So this function is used to correct the orientation of a C frame, meaning that it will make sure or, you know, it will make the C frame and its axis, it makes sure that those are perpendicular to each other and also make sure that they are normalized, which means each axis is of a unit length. So this would be useful where if you uh, were making something and you set up key binds to move apart and you know, the, the, that can get into really small numbers. Ortho normalize can make it so it'll clean up those numbers so it can be used in other translations. So I have this C frame here with small numbers you know we have 0 0.1 0 0.1 here and they are slightly non-orthonormal so they are slightly not perpendicular so if we wanted to correct this i'm just going to print the this c frame so we can easily see it in the output and i'm also going to say well this is the transformation to say the c frame oh i keep typing the wrong one c frame and then ortho normalize and then we're once again after that going to print the same thing. Sorry, I just did something really dumb. I just tried to test this while I was recording and I actually forgot to leave out something very important. I need to say C frame will be equal to this and <laughs> that's my bad. But now if we run this, we'll see that our numbers are cleaned up. So it went from 0 0.100 with a whole bunch of zeros and one on the end to zero i guess and a few extra you know it just cleaned it up for us so everything is perpendicular to each other which is this number right here and so the last function for this video is c frame dot from matrix and this function is like c frame dot new but we have a position which is a vector three to position whatever we want to position and we also can put in a vector x vector y and vector z arguments and these last three are directional vectors that can make up an orientation of the c-frame so we are once again going to position this part 
so we're going to make it so we have this variable again and then we can say part dot c frame we go to c frame dot from matrix and we're going to put in our position which i'm going to say part dot position uh plus vector three dot new so make it go up 10 maybe or five studs in the air and then we need those last directional ones which i'm going to make variables for up here so we're going to say vx is equal to vector three dot new and then we can put in our x y and z for our orientation and i'm just going to throw in some random numbers like 0 0.5 1 and 2 and i'm gonna do the same for the other uh, directional ones so now that is all done we can come in here and toss all of these in here vx vy and then vz so when running this code it makes it look like this like i covered in a previous video if we go into the game we will see that the part is orientated like this and it's five studs from where it was and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace